Hello my loves and welcome to the ultimate guide of split. spent over a month in split I feel like I'm the perfect person to give you this guide so I hope you do enjoy if you're excited hit that thumbs up if you're visiting let me know in the comment section down below if you have any other questions please don't hesitate to ask um, reach out to me either in the comments or over on my Instagram so to make this guide as easy as possible I've organized it into sections um, and we're gonna start off with my favorite which is where to eat so in split there's an absolute abundance of places you can eat um, they have all types of cuisine and they really do cater to everyone's needs. You can find everything from burger houses, sushi restaurants and even vegetarian and vegan places too. Today I'll share with you some of the places I actually went to and that are ones that I can recommend. However, there are so many more so please do do a little bit of your own research, walk around and see what takes your fancy and just try something out that's new. This one here is actually called Basta. It was on the marina front and it was actually really well priced for its location. You have a view of the harbour and it's a great pizza place. Also lovely to stop for like a weekend cocktail or a coffee. So if you're staying a long time like we were, some nights you might not feel like going out. So another alternative would be to use Walt. Walt is an app, it's a bit like Deliveroo or Jesse and you can order from like so many different restaurants on there there's again loads of choice we had a great Thai place I'll pop the name on the screen and we also ordered a few pizzas <laughs> um, from um, another name I'll pop on the screen here because I can't remember off the top of my head um, and both of them were great and I could highly recommend but it's also got like ratings on there so you can kind of like find what you want based on like cost and um, other people's ratings so it's a really good app they also do deliver um, other things as well so maybe like groceries or we actually got some yoga mats delivered things like that that maybe you can't find by walking around but they're on the app um, so it's definitely worth using you can also get a discount code if you um, sign up a friend so I'll leave a link down below and then if you sign up via that you get £3.50 off and again, if you are staying for longer than maybe a week, you may want to do some of your own cooking. There's loads of grocery stores um, around. One I would recommend though, close to the centre, it's about a five minute walk out of the centre, it's called, it's called Lidl. <laughs> I feel like everyone knows what Lidl is. Um, but it's the most affordable, definitely. Um, but most of the supermarkets are um, actually just dotted around the town centre. Uh, if you type in Tommy or Consum, um, then you'll be able to find them. Next we'll move on to things to see and things to do. Obviously one of my favourite things to do here is literally just walk around the old town exploring um, all it has to offer, the amazing buildings, so much history here. Um, what I would highly recommend doing if you want to learn about that is to um, find a guy who it says walking tour on and pay him X amount of kuna to tell you about the history because it's such a beautiful place with so much history and it would be a shame not to learn about it whilst you're here and um, there's also when you're walking around you can literally just get lost in the cobbled streets and, and I think it's quite a fun thing to do just spend maybe an hour or two just wandering around seeing what you find um, as around every corner there's just beautiful cafes shops restaurants and quirky little stores um, with just yeah so much to see. Another thing to see in Split would be the fish market and um, they have a local fish market every day from 6am till 1pm and they also have like a local veg and fruit and veg market where they also have some stalls of locals selling like homemade goods, maybe some honey, olive oil which is very um, popular here as they grow it all themselves and um, you can also get things like souvenirs there, flowers and just little bits and bobs.
in Split there are many beaches to visit and um, they all sort of lead on to one another so if you start walking you'll find most of them. Um, you can either head from the centre of the river left, this is left you'll find the first um, beach is the only sand beach I think in Split um, and then following on from that there's more just pebble, pebble beaches. My personal favourite was if you turn right you go past the marina, you go past a little park um, and it's kind of tricky to find but just persevere and find it because you go around this absolutely beautiful coastline um, where you can go rock jumping, the water is just the clearest you've ever seen um, and you find some absolutely amazing parks, um, beaches there. Um, these this is all part of the Marjoram Park, so um, I'll pop a little picture here. The Marjoram Park is one of my absolute must-sees when visiting Split because it's the most absolutely beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's huge, so you might want to um, hike up it one day. Um, there's a, a steps you can take um, from just the right side of the centre of Split. Um, I think there's 300 and something steps which will take you all the way to the highest peak. You can see um, Trigia from there which is where I am actually now. Um, and also you can just see loads of the beautiful islands. It's an absolutely great view. Um, it would be lovely for sunrise, sunset. Um, we hiked up in the middle of the day and it was beautiful. Just bear in mind obviously what time of year you go it's going to be kind of toasty. Um, make sure you've got your SPF on. But um, we also went around the other side of it so you have to kind of walk through the town centre to find the other side the other entrance but I would highly recommend doing this because that side was stunning like there was mountains there was sea the crystal clear waters were just beautiful there wasn't so many beaches as such but the walk was absolutely stunning you can't actually do a loop walk of the whole Marjoram Park probably take you quite a while without going to the peak just around um, but I definitely think you should do it, get yourself a picnic, take a little lunch down there. I think there is a cafe or a restaurant down there as well, so you don't, might not have to worry about that, but um, highly recommend doing that. There's also a little like, workout um, bit in the, in the park itself as well, um, or you could hire some bicycles and cycle around it. It is either foot or bicycle though. Actually saying that, I do think there is a bus that might, might drop you off there, so if you aren't able to do walking or bike biking then I highly do recommend just going to see it because it's some of the most stunning views I've ever seen in my entire life. I'll try and pop some clips on the screen so you can see but wow you have to do it for yourself. As far as excursions go I always think when I click on an ultimate guide to somewhere I don't want to see trips to XXX like all these different places. I want to see things I can do where I am but I kind of get why people do include these things so I have included them in today's video um, just because they are there are some things to do which as you are so close to them from Split, it would be a shame to miss. So the Kirka National Park and Waterfalls are around one hour away from Split. You can drive there or take an excursion um, that's planned already. We decided to rent a car and drive ourselves. We parked a little bit further away and then you can get this awesome boat which takes you, it's about 15 minutes on the boat, um, to the na National Park and to the waterfalls. And we actually decided to walk back, it's about an hour long walk if you did want to do that. So it costs around £10 each to get into the waterfalls and it took around two hours probably just to see it all at like a leisurely place. There is also like food and drink there, coffees, beers, those kind of things but it is you can also take your own in which is quite nice. So another excursion would be to take a trip to one of the islands. Um, we actually visited the third biggest island here in Croatia, which is called Brach. Um, it was about a 50 minute ferry ride over. You can get the ferry, um, you can buy the ticket on the day or you can buy it online on the Jadralina. I'll leave the link here and down below in the description box website. That costs around eight pound for the two of us each way. You need to be there about 15 minutes early but I'd say give yourself half an hour to buy your ticket and to board the ferry. There are also other excursions that we haven't done but that are very well known here which such things as there's a blue cave tour um, and like I said lots of other island tours. There's, I think there's like a tour you can go around five of the islands in one day, those kind of things so lovely options to do um, if you were looking to see more of Croatia. Okay, so I've dedicated a separate part of this video to coffee shops. If you are a digital nomad or traveling um, as a entrepreneur and you want to work for some coffee shops, these are my top picks. Um, also places to get a really good coffee, which is super important for me personally. And also the Arca working spaces, which I will pop on the screen as well. Okay, so number one has to be, um, it's called Terra, Terra, Terraca. 
Vizalika. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if that's right, but this one is 100% for views. Um, also, you can get the Carva Slug there, which is a traditional Croatian coffee. You can either have an espresso, and then it has basically this like um, ice cream style cream. So it's like this really cold cream just in the top. This was an absolute treat. I love these, so definitely try that. Um, or it's just great for like views, but this is just a lovely place. I can just imagine, I didn't actually work here, but I can imagine working here um, and it just being the dream come true. My second pick is actually a coffee slash gin house. Um, we didn't go back for gin, but I think it looked insane. The coffee there was the best coffee I did have in Split. Um, and I'll leave the name of this place on the screen. My third option is a takeaway only. This is lovely if you just wanna go and get your morning coffee, go for a little stroll around the streets. Uh, this is called like four coffee special or something like that um it's fairly reasonably priced it's a little bit more expensive than like um your bog standard coffee as it is more of a specialty coffee shop um but it's really cute it's kind of quirky when you know where it is it's easy to find but initially it was a little bit difficult to find those would be my top three picks 100 percent for, for coffee shops for me one of the best things i actually found here was the shopping mall which um if you are obviously a subscriber of my channel you'll know my whole channel is mostly about fashion and a little bit about lifestyle and the shopping mall so the mall of split is probably one of the best malls i've been to in my life i've been to some great ones in america and also in malaysia but the mall of split was absolutely just everything you need and more and also i have to mention the zara in split itself um was absolutely like just gorgeous so if you don't get a chance to go to the mall of split then you can definitely get a little bit of shopping done in split itself but um i would highly recommend visiting the zara in split <laughs> as a lot of my wardrobe has just come from there. The best way to get to the Mall of Split would either be to rent a scooter if you feel comfortable to do so, or just get an Uber, it's super easy and really affordable. There is an alternative, which is to get the free bus. It does take an hour, and it's only a 15 minute journey by car, so it's completely up to you, and obviously whatever your budget allows. So whilst we were in Split, we did everything by foot. Um, we did rent a car one day, I will recommend the car company we used it was called Luta I'll pop the details down below in the description box and um, they were really well priced really easy to um, pick up it was right in the center and um, there was just like no fuss or stress we had a brand new car it was beautiful and it was just exactly what we needed and um, so personally I think you can get around mostly on foot but if you are going to do an excursions you can obviously do paid ones or if you want to do it yourself you can hire a car for the day um, so it's entirely up to you and your budget you do see a lot of scooters around as well, like the um, like electric scooters. So if anyone is looking for some, some way to get around that's a little bit easier, we did do a lot of steps, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I think it was definitely lovely and you get to see a lot more by foot. Um, obviously it does restrict you a little bit from going too far if you're not keen on walking for a long time. Some of the beaches were a little bit further, but we enjoyed the walk to get to them. You could also rent like a bicycle or an A, like moped um both of them are kind of like i guess reasonable um if you're here for a short time maybe you could negotiate for a long long term rental if you're here for a little bit longer like we were like i said i honestly think you can see most of the places that you want to see in split by foot a few additional extras that i forgot to mention um would be when you've arrived in split you can get an uber from the airport super easy and probably a lot cheaper than a taxi there's a luggage storage point if you can't check into your Airbnb um, as early as you arrive called um, there's an app called bounce where you can do lots of local places um, and also obviously if you were going to check out earlier and still wanted to explore for your last day um, you could also use this you normally pay for either 24 hours per piece of luggage or you can pay for like an hour I think or something like that but it's very very reasonable service I'd say most of the restaurants are fairly usually priced. Um, I'd say it's probably a little bit under UK prices. Um, it depends where you eat. If you eat on the Riva, along the front, it's a lot more. Um, and then if you find more local places, it's a bit less. There are some very expensive places, which I haven't really included. Um, most of the places we ate at were reasonably priced. I would say the sushi place was a little bit higher, but sushi normally is. Other things that I forgot to mention that maybe we didn't do but maybe of interest to you. If you like a night out, apparently the place to be is Fabrique, which is on the seafront, just at the end of the river to the right. 
There's also a beautiful church on the front as well, right by Fab Fabrique, which is really pretty. Um, and there's also loads of museums. We didn't actually go to any because we'd been to London recently and been to quite a few because it was rainy. Um, so we're kind of all museumed out, but there's loads of museums in Split to go to, especially if you're into art, history, these kind of things. Um, then you're literally going to be torn between which one to go to. If you are on more of a budget, there are loads of, um, if you go to the more local places, you can get a coffee for around a pound. Uh, there's loads of bakeries and they love their pastries here. So you can definitely go and just pick up some something light for lunch um, in one of these places. You can get a coffee and a croissant for probably two pounds. You can get something for lunch for probably around one to two pounds in the smaller bakeries, um, which are dotted around the place everywhere. So you definitely can see the city on a lower budget and obviously book something through Airbnb. There's also hostels here. Um, and then obviously if you are at a higher budget, there's some lovely hotels. We booked an Airbnb for a month and we had a really good deal. I know that the prices do go up in high season, but it's obviously you can spend a bit of time looking. You definitely can find some good bargains. Another thing Split has an abundance of is ice cream shops. So there's so many ice cream shops. I would say though my favorite was um, called Luna's or Luca's. I'll pop it here um, and the ice cream there was amazing I think it's all homemade they also have cakes in there which looked insane um, so if you have a special occasion or event it would be a great place to pick up a cake for that as well and then finally they also had um, these cute pastry shops called Bobby's which also sold ice cream um, which were amazing they did like lovely strudels lovely things for lunch um, a little bit more expensive than like a standard bakery but really would recommend trying them because they're lovely and they're almost on like every corner here. So if you have any more questions about your visit to Split, please feel free to message me over on Instagram or leave a comment in today's video. If you found it useful, please let me know. Leave a thumbs up. Let me know if you come in, like I said, to Split or to Croatia. And I, as I love hearing from you, and I hope you did enjoy today's video. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time.